What's going on everybody? Gunner here. It is the middle of February and basically that means that I'm cooped up and I've been thinking about fishing for a long time and lacked the self-control <coughs> to not buy some new fly lines. <laughs> so uh, if you're like me and this kind of winter seasons when you like to buy a new reel, some new fly lines, maybe another spool and you're gonna get stuff rigged up for the season, get some things organized. Um, I kind of thought this would be a good opportunity to go over how to rig a fly reel. Literally from you know start to finish, backing, line, leader attachments, all the knots. Uh, we'll, we're gonna go over basically, I uh, forget the knot that you, the name of the knot to attach it to the reel, but we'll go over that. You know, your basic loop to loop, nail knight, all bright knot, um, and then how to do a terminal connection. Um, aside from, you know, some fly lines have welded loops, some don't, so we'll cover all the bases so that anybody can rig a fly reel if you want to do it yourself. Um, and I will say, most fly shops, probably all of them, uh, but if you get your reel there, they'll probably put backing on it for you. If you get your reel online, they'll probably rig the whole thing. Um, but I'm kind of, I like to do things myself, um, and so for anybody who's doing this yourself, this is how to do it. So a few things that you're going to need, you don't need a full a full fly rod but you need a fly rod handle basically uh, it's gonna be night and day difference between trying to you know spool this up hanging onto it versus just hanging onto an actual cork handle and being able to thread the line onto your reel um, we're gonna have an empty reel I will show you how to do this without tools but again if your fly lines don't have uh, welded loops you can use an Albright which doesn't need any tools but one of the things that I like to do is have a nail knot tool super helpful um, these come with instructions on how to use them on the package but I'll try to get a close-up on that knot so you know how to use that I like to use just any hemos uh, basically for tightening my loop to loop knots because these have a nice rounded edge I can get a lot of torque on that um, just a pair of nippers you can use a knife whatever you got and then I am gonna rig a terminal connection and basically what that is is at the end of your fly line I'm gonna have maybe a little tag end of eight inches six inches something like that of mono that way I'm never retying that nail knot or my loop to loop connection or my Albright knot from my fly line to my leader except maybe once a season or once every other season depending on how much I use it so that terminal connection basically from there forward it's all leader terminal leader terminal leader terminal and you're never redoing that knot for the entire year that's kind of the purpose um, so you just need a little bit of leader material something stiff probably 30 pound monofilament will be perfect for that and then on my nail knot or my Albright I always just give them a little dash of Zappa Gap brushable and let that cure on there and that'll solve that. Now when we're doing these lines, basically the reason why I wanted to do this is because I do this without uh, like a line winder or anything like that and I want to show you how to put a line on a fly reel without getting any twist into it. And the trick to that is a pencil. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this. If you don't like feet, don't worry, I won't zoom in on my feet, but basically I'm gonna hold this in between my toes way down here on the ground and apply pressure with my feet. Uh, and that way I have a straight, you know, spool coming straight onto a reel. And if you can imagine, like if you ever wind a hose or something, if you take this off <laughs> this way instead of this way, you get a boatload of twist. And one of the reasons why we need to avoid this in fly fishing is because twist is probably the fastest way to kill the coating of your fly line. Start to get cracks in there, start to have it peel off. And so if you want your fly lines to last more than one season, easiest way to do that, put them on perfectly straight, uh, again, so that there's no line twist. And then obviously you can fish them with swivels and things throughout the season to help reduce that. Um, so let's get started. I'm gonna put this uh, bare reel here on my empty cork so now I have something to hang on to I'm basically going to grab it up here and run my fly line and my backing through my fingers so that I can apply tension as it's going on my spool now something I want to mention about fly reels whenever you buy a fly reel uh, go online uh, google it whatever check the model and almost every single website that sells a fly reel will specifically tell you how much backing they're designed to have. And so the backing, you know, this reel right here is designed for 100 yards of 20 pound backing. Now 20 pound backing has a specific diameter so they understand, you know, width of the reel, how much area 
basically 20 pounds of 100 yards is going to take up. And the way that the reason why that's important is because if you put 150 yards on here, you're not going to fit your fly line. You're going to have to take it all off, redo your knots, you know, hopefully strip off 50 yards and then re-spool it so that your fly line isn't hitting your, your end of your reel. The other issue is if you don't put enough backing on, say 70 yards, uh, basically when you go to pick up line, you go to put a fish on a reel, um, you know, this, there's no gear ratios in a fly reel. One turns, one turn. And so if you don't have this spooled up appropriately, you're not going to be picking up line as fast. That's not the biggest issue. I'd rather have it underspooled than overspooled. Um, but companies like Rio make it really easy for you, but they sell backing 20 pounds, 100 yards. You can't mess it up. Put it on the reel, it's the exact amount that the reel is calibrated for. They'll sell them, you know, uh, 20 pounds by 200 yards, uh, 200 yards by 30 pounds, whatever. They'll have the exact values that you need to spool up your reel. Again, fly shops will do this for you, especially if you ask them. You know, they'll have a thousand yard spool there and they'll just spool it up for you, crank it on with the drill. That's excellent, let them do that if you want. Um, but again, reel just makes it easy, so you're not guessing. So I'm going to get this camera zoomed in on this reel here and I'll show you guys how to attach the backing um, with the correct knots. And basically the knot we're going to use is designed not to stop a fish, say if he takes all your fly line and all your backing, you basically you're screwed anyway, but it's not designed to stop a fish. It's designed if you whoop, drop your rod overboard and you somehow manage to get the line and you try to pull your rod back to the boat, you're, you're going to be pulling out drag, pulling out drag, and eventually you're going to hit that knot and it's designed not to break with the weight of a rod or what, what, what have you so that you can get the rod back in the boat and then pick up all your lines. So that's what it's designed for. Um, so let's zoom in and get started. All right, so I got you zoomed in on my reel here. I don't really have a, a f nice way to hold this, so unfortunately this is the camera angle we got. But basically, you wanna pass your backing here. Man, this is a nightmare to try to film through the internal diameter of your reel, right? You just want to pass that through back to back. Thread it through my reel, just inside uh, inside and out the other. And basically, I'm going to take this tag end here, and I'm going to tie an overhand knot around my backing. So I took my tag end, tied an overhand knot around my backing. Now, when you pull on this, it's going to seat against that reel. And that's great, but if you pull really hard, it's just going to slip out. So what you want to do is you want to take that tag end and just put a simple overhand knot in it. I'll even do it twice so it's a, a pretty aggressive little bump in my line here. Make sure that seat's in the same place. You can take a pair of nippers here and just cut that because we don't need that. And now when I go and pull on my backing, it's going to slip down there. And then that little overhand knot is going to seat that in place. Now I have that attached. <coughs> so this is where things get a little bit awkward. <laughs> uh, but basically, what you're looking to do, you just take a pencil, mechanical pencil, normal pencil, a pen, doesn't matter. But I'm going to thread that literally through my spool, right? Take your socks and your shoes off. Hold that between your toes. Now I have a perfectly straight line connection from my spool to my reel. And something I do with my fingers is, you know, I just weave my fingers back and forth, just like how, you know, if you're reeling on a bait caster, it's got that little guide that switches back and forth, and it's just so your backing never piles up in one spot. You don't create any awkward ridge lines or something that are gonna fall down and then your backing is going to get knotted on itself. Those are all big no-nos, especially if you're going, you know, saltwater fishing or carp fishing or steelhead fishing and you have a chance of a fish actually taking you into your backing. Uh, you don't want to have any knots or any line slippage back there, but you need a perfectly smooth, nice flat surface. So with my fingers, I just guide it back and forth. And again, I'm basically just holding that with my toes, just like this. So I have a perfectly straight line connection coming off the spool onto my reel. No line twist whatsoever. So I'm going to be rigging up Rio's outbound short and an intermediate sink six, which is one of my all-time favorite 
streamer lines. Now when you take this out of the package, you're gonna see it's got a little tag right here that says attach this end to backing. Right, so it's a sink tip line, so I know that the sink tip, right, should be the last thing to go on. So just be aware of that. You don't wanna put this on backwards. But I'm gonna leave one of these. They got basically zip ties that hold this line in place. You see that little zip tie right in there? So that's relatively important. Just leave it on there while you're putting this knot. So most modern high-end lines are gonna have a product called the welded loop. Now what's really cool is you can basically just do a, a perfection loop in your backing and loop to loop it through here. You can also tie an Albright knot to this, to attach this. Um, but something I wanna show you guys uh, for basically anybody who's not fishing a, a really high-end line or, or maybe you just don't have this option, but basically it's how to do a nail knot because that's, that's what they used to do back in the day. Um, but before I get too far ahead of myself, let me show you guys something really cool for everybody who does have this. So I'm gonna attach this with a loop to loop real quick, but I'm gonna do a massive perfection loop. So I'm gonna make a perfection loop in my fly line backing. First, you just want to make a, a little tiny loop here. And I'm gonna, and so this loop, basically my, my tag end, makes a loop going behind. Then I'm gonna make a massive loop right in front, take my tag end and pass it in between the two. I'm gonna thread my big loop through my small loop, <clears throat> pull that closed. If your tag end is sticking out at a 90 degree angle, you know you did it right. Now the reason why this is so big is because I want to be able to fit this entire spool around this loop. And that's how you make that easy peasy. I'm gonna cut my tag end here. But basically what you do is you take your backing, you pass it through the loop here, and then I can just, whoa, put that whole spool through that. <laughs> How's this wanting to go? What you guys do here? And then you can just cinch that down as a loop to loop and you're good to go. So that's gonna fish, you don't have to worry about that, you're not cutting anything. That's the easy way, the quick way to attach your backing to a welded loop system. Now for everybody who doesn't have a welded loop, <gasps> don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. Show you guys how to tie a nail knot real quick. And I'm gonna to try to make sure this is all in frame, but basically I'm gonna hold my tool in my hand. Now, the, the end, you want the end that's attaching to the reel to be towards the back of the tool. And you want the tag end to be at the front of the tool. Now I'm gonna pin this to my side of this tool with my thumb here, with about a foot or so of tag end. And I'm gonna start wrapping that over top of itself. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight turns, seven turns, six turns, whatever. Then you're gonna pass that tag in now. Woo, back out the mouth of the tool. This is what's really cool about this tool. I'm gonna to draw it down and hold it with some fingers that I don't have. Now you take your fly line, and this conveniently has a little bend to it, but you can bite it with your teeth and put a little kink in it. You thread that through the mouth of that tool, and now that kink's gonna come up onto this little flat section. You pinch that flat section. I have my uh, line going to my reel pinched, and all I have is this tag end, which you want to reef off onto your fly line, and that's gonna seat that knot. So I'm just gonna manipulate this, make sure that it's seated nice and clean. And something you can do to get a lot of pressure on this, you can put a little perfection loop right here in your tag end. And it's just enough to fit over the, the nose of my hemos. So now, I have a ton of leverage that I can yank on that. I'm just gonna seat that, pull on my fly line, pull on that end. Make sure that this sucker is on here good. Now I'm not too worried about this backing and fly line slipping. I'm not gonna super glue this knot at all. but. Make sure that that is on there and it's not going anywhere. Try not to cut your fingers by pulling so hard, but and then I'll just clean up my tag ends. So that's how you tie a nail knot. That's how you attach both a fly line to backing, but also a fly line to a terminal connection, a 
of course the terminal connection is going to be using monofilament but that is how you do it if you do not have a welded loop of any kind something you want to be careful of fly lines are not wound onto their little packaging spools with a lot of pressure so if you pinch this really hard with your feet, the fly line's gonna dig into that spool. So you wanna apply most of your pressure with your hands on this one, not your feet, or else it'll kind of can get knotted on there and not be happy with you. So try to apply most of the pressure with your hands when you're doing your fly lines. The reason why I like using those Rio pre-spooled, you know, 100 yards, is for this right here. You see that? This is like perfect. If you put too much on there, that fly line is going to be bumping into this while you're reeling. If you don't have enough, you're not going to pick up line appropriately when you're trying to get a fish on the reel. Which, in all fairness, I don't put fish on the reel almost ever, but it's still nice to do correctly. So now you guys uh, should know how to do a loop to loop, right? You know how to do a perfection loop. Um, you know how to do a nail knot. So you could, uh, on this welded loop, you could just do a loop to loop put on your leader and you're good to go. Um, you could also, if you don't have a loop-to-loop, -loop, you could do a nail knot with monofilament, probably 30 pound, um, and just run a little eight inch tag in with a perfection loop at the end of that. But I wanna show you guys how to do an a Albright knot real quick, because an Albright knot is typically what I'll use for my pike and muskie or my peacock bass lines, because these welded loops, as awesome as this technology is, I have had my leader dig into them, especially on uh, a really big fish. Um, I've had them, they'll, they'll kind of wear out. They can wear out, you know, after a season or two, you'll see your leaders uh, kinked into this and it's kind of gouging into it and that makes me a little nervous. Um, and something about a nail knot, Although I trust a nail knot on a six weight or seven weight, you know, fishing for smallies, uh, pike, musky, big game, it is a knot that can slip. So I want to show you real quick how to do an Albright knot, which is really similar to a nail knot in all fairness. But I'm going to take my fly line, I just cut that perfection or that welded loop off, and I'm going to double this back just like this. I'm going to take my pliers, and I'm just going to kind of put a little kink into this so that that stays there for me. Now I'm gonna take, let's say, 30 pound mono here. 0 0.13, 0.19, what is this? 35 pound. And this is for your terminal end, right? And the really important thing about this knot is basically that your mono comes in and out of the loop in the same direction. So this loop right now, uh, if I hold this down, I'm either going to come in from the back side or I'm going to come in from the front side. If you come in from the front, your knot has to come out of the front. If you come in from the back, your knot has to come out of the back. So I got my fly line doubled over. I'm going to take this through the underside. This mono has a bunch of memory in it, which is not making this super fun. But basically I'm going to catch that and tie a nail knot tool basically on the way down. I'm going to wrap this over this line. That was three. That was four. Five. We'll go six. And again, you got to make sure that my tag end comes out of this knot the same way that it went in that knot. And then I'm going to pull both at the same time. Pull that knot down, pull that knot down. Make sure I didn't pull that over my fly line. And then I'm just reefing on this. Teeth, tag ends. Making sure my fly line's not going anywhere. Tag end's not going anywhere. And now what you can see is my fly line is doubled over and that knot cannot slip out of there. I'm gonna cut my tag ends real quick here. And so this is the style knot I'd use, you know, on my 10 weight, my musky lines and such. And that is your Albright knot. Try to get this real close here. And that is your Albright knot. You can see my fly line's doubled over, my leader can't pull out. 
um, unlike a nail knot, which is just tied onto a straight section of fly line and it can slip off um, on say a really big fish or with a lot of pressure, this fly line is doubled over and your tag end and your main line are coming out to the same, uh, the same, you know, they keep both went in the front and came out the front. In my case, they both went in the back and came out the back. Um, so that's physically, that tag end is physically unable to slip out of there. This is 100% good to go. So then what I'm going to do is just move down, say four, five, six, seven inches, doesn't really matter. I'm going to do a little perfection loop here. So not in the back, not in the front. Tag end between the two. Pull the front loop through the back loop. Again, if you're Tag end goes out 90 degrees, you did a good job. You can take your hemos here, get that wet, put a lot of pressure on that, make sure that's set and good to go. And now for the entire season, maybe even two seasons, depending on how much I use this line setup, all of my leaders are going to go right here onto this loop to loop. This perfection loop is going to uh, be my connection zone for every leader build for the entire season on this line. And then this knot, I might replace every other year or so, um, or at the start of every season. So, I know that was a lot of jargon in there. And who knows if that was helpful or not. <laughs> but hopefully there was something to take home from that um, and that you guys can now rig any new lines new reels that you got for the 2019 fishing season and you can do it without any line twists uh, you can do it with or without lines that have welded loops um, you can prep both you know your five or six weights your seven weights with nail knots but you can also use an albright knot which a doesn't need a tool and b can't slip um, it is not as low profile so it doesn't go through the guides as well um, but usually i'm fishing a pretty short leader and if i'm running through the guides i'm too close anyway. Um, and what I'll do again, if I'm doing a nail knot, <clears throat> I'll probably rig this whole rod and put a leader on here and put some tension on here. But for the time being, I'm just going to hold it. But I'll just take a little brush of Zappa Gap and just touch that knot, touch that Albright, touch that nail knot, and just leave this under tension for oh, I don't know, you know, 30 seconds or something or a minute or whatever, and that's going to be completely dry, and that's going to stop you from having any slippage <laughs> issues whatsoever um, and, and really being able to trust that for the full strength of your, your fly line core and this little uh, butt section of monofilament. Oh, I thought of something to add. <clears throat> that's the baby monitor. <laughs> um, so once you get this rigged, this is how I store all my reels. So I'm going to reel this up to that terminal connection that I did, that little 8 inches of mono filament or whatever. And now I take that mono and I put that over the back of my reel seat. Ta-da! Reel that tight. And now that's completely rigged, perfect. You don't have your mono down here when you need to search for it. It's right up here on the back of my reel seat. You can see my mono right there running through the back of my reel seat, coming over the front and straight down. And that's how I store all that. Increase your drag a little bit and it's not going to back off. And that's how I store all my fly reels um, with the terminal connections. And you can do it with the full leader system. So, <clears throat> thought I'd add that real quick. Really easy way to not have your line just free and whatever, getting all messy or anything like that. So, thanks for watching. <laughs>